Amen. 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 Praise God. Like I said, it's so good to see everybody on this wonderful Monday. Today's lesson. Today's lesson. Really funny how today's lesson. The Holy Spirit. I, I just love the Holy Spirit. The way the Holy Spirit gives me lessons is it re, is amazing because sometimes I'm just watching TV or I hear somebody say something and the Holy Spirit says, that's your next lesson. That's your next lesson. So I was just thinking last night, we, we've been doing a lot of lessons on fear. This, this is going to be kind of a fun at first. Excuse me. At first, it's going to be a fun lesson and then we'll get to some truth. <laughs> I was just thinking about all the things people fear about in the world all the fear in the world now we we talked about this before we talked about how people walk in fear and we talk about how we don't walk in fear we're in the world we're not of the world and we talk about that all the time so just curious i said i said what are people in the world who don't have the lord what are they fearing see we understand what the fear is if you don't have god and you don't have your salvation that's a real reason to fear but if you don't know the word if you don't know there's something like that to, to fear about, what are you fearing if you don't have the fear of the Lord in your in your life and you don't revere the Lord and you don't know anything about salvation, you don't know anything about the word of God, what are you fearing? Because you don't even know to fear. Let me say it again. If you don't know the word of God, you don't even know to fear about your salvation. Are you right with the Lord or not? That's not even in your vocabulary because you don't know what the word says, what's in the word. And so that's why even those of us who live by the word have to teach those who got saved. A lot of people got saved and don't know a single thing in the word. Let me say it again. A lot of people have gotten saved and don't know a single thing that the word says. And they walk in fear. And they walk in fear too. Because if you don't know what the word says, you don't know how to make it right with the Lord and get saved. Like I got saying, don't wait too late to get saved. If you don't know that you need to get saved, you don't even know. No, that, that's my text for today. That is my text. Let's look at Hosea. Hosea 4, 6. Turn to Hosea 4, 6, and 7. That leads into my lesson. That's why it says, that's why the time is, why, <laughs> what, what should we feel? Uh, 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 John, is that what I said? Let me see. Make sure I get the. I say the right title, you guys. Uh, let me go back. But I, sometimes, sometimes I don't have enough space to put the whole title. But uh, John, now you get the title. See, I only have that much space. But it says, "What should we fear the most?" The whole title is, "What should we fear the most?" I only had enough space to put what we fear the most. But what should we fear? We just talked about our salvation going to be for eternity but if you don't know that let's look at hosea 4 6 4 6 my people are destroyed a lack of knowledge now wait first let's just stop right there then we get into the other part my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge now now remember lord remember lord uh deanne's got the scripture lord remember i got scripture now my people perish for lack of knowledge now, let's just stop right there if you don't know, we just talked about it. What's perishing? If you don't know there is a word, that's a lack of knowledge. How do you perish? If you don't know you need to get saved, you don't know you need to get things right with the Lord. If you don't know that, then you just live your life and you just live your life carefree in sin. You live your life carefree in sin and don't even know you need to get things right. You don't even know you need to get things right with the Lord. So that's the first part. My people perish. Now that's talking about the people who just don't know. Now, now of course, if sometimes people ask me, well, what about people? What about what about people who live in parts of the world and have never heard the word? What about them? Uh, are they going to hell if they've never ever heard God? Now, that's a good question. That is a good question. But I'm pretty sure if you live in a tribe in a part of the world where there's no communion with the world, I'm sure that God has a plan for them as well. Let me just answer that. See, remember, we can never ask, we can never answer any question exactly. And so don't don't get upset if someone asks you for a specific answer. How come God does this? Why doesn't God do that? We can't answer that question. Don't be prideful and try to answer something you can't answer. We don't know the ways of God. We can only speculate, 
theorize because remember isaiah 5 8 9 his ways are higher than our ways his thoughts above us as high as the heavens are as high as the heavens are above earth his ways are higher than our ways his thoughts above our thoughts so don't trifle and try to answer a question you don't know let me say it again don't get prideful and try to answer a question you can't answer we don't know that answer but so now so my speculation is if people live somewhere and there's no internet no tv no communication with civilization i speculate i'm not answering i speculate that god is love and he's gonna love them in some way because they don't know and don't have a chance to know now now let's look at all the people who have internet who have television and don't pay attention to the word that's different if you got internet you got television you got a cell phone you got all connection about the word of god all around you and you just don't look at it or you refuse to look at it now let's look let's look at the next part my people pray for a lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge stop right there stop right there because you have rejected knowledge that means you know about the word i don't pay attention to that yeah the word of god yeah i heard about it i reject it rejection comes in many forms you can actually you can absolutely refuse refuse to listen you can look the other way remember if the word of god is all around you and you refuse to look at it that's a way of re that's one form of rejection you know there's a word of god and you know there's a bible and you know there's a way to live but you choose to turn the other way you choose the way that's a rejection one form of rejection some people just say I, I, that there are too many rules there's just too many rules in the word of god some people I had a person tell me that a person actually said that you know what i know there's a word of god but there's just too many rules i can't live by i can't live by all those rules oh oh wait, whoa whoa so you rather follow all the rules that lead to sin but you don't want to really you you, you don't want to follow the rules that, that will save you and protect your salvation you choose to follow the world rules and go straight to hell because you refuse to follow the rules that give you salvation is that what you're saying to me uh because you have rejected knowledge i will reject you from being my priest Whoa. let's say read him because you have rejected knowledge i will reject you from being my priest you can't be a child of god if you're not following the word you refuse you look away you turn the chin turn the other cheek away Jesus and somebody's trying to tell you about the word of God somebody's trying to save your life somebody's trying how to get peace in your life and you turn the other way and you choose to walk in there a, a child of God is trying to tell you how to how to find the peace of God how to hold on to God's unchanging hand how to keep your mind stayed on him oh yeah don't preach to me stop preaching to me if there's another form of rejection stop preaching to me what are you doing stop preaching what is this stop preaching to me you're rejecting another because you have rejected knowledge i will also reject you i would never ever want god to say i will reject you i'm trying to get under god's things i'm doing my best to stay under under in a secret place under his un almighty shadow i don't ever want the god to say because because you've done this i reject you but some people are playing around with that some people are playing around some people are around playing around with hebrews 10 6 if you sin willfully hebrews 10 26 i said it wrong yesterday hebrews 10 20 if you sin willfully there no longer remains a sacrifice for your sins you know the truth and you choose you choose to willfully disobey and walk in sin there no longer remains a sacrifice for you jesus did die for sinners he died for us those of us who believe in him who shall not perish have everlasting life he represented sin when he said it is finished he took on the sins of the world on the cross so when he died he took every sin with him so that those who believe believe in him believe in him are not perish but have everlasting life but if you choose not to believe in him my people perish for lack of knowledge or because you rejected knowledge i will also reject you from being my priest and since let's read the rest of it since you have forgotten the law of your Lord, I will forgive your children. Wait a minute. Whoops. Hold up. 
whoa, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Let's look at the last part of chapter, verse six. You have forgotten the law of your God. I will also forget your children. What are you doing? You're messing around with your next generation. You're messing around with the kids. Your, your rebellion, your refusal to even at or receive the word of God, you're now messing with your the generation after you. I will forget your children. That means the sins of the father or mother is being the sins of the child. You started because you refused to receive God. You refused. You turned the other cheek. You looked away. I don't, I don't want nothing. Don't to me. Get away from me with the word. Get away from me with the word. And guess what? That decision, since you have forgotten the law of the Lord, I will also get your children. Now let's let's look at the whole part. Now let's look at the, that's a mouth. That one verse says a lot. That's why I stopped every part. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, this is a mistake we make. We'll stop right there. Do you realize how much we just missed when people stop? Oh, you know, my people perish for lack of knowledge and they stop. That's not the power of the verse. That's just the beginning of the verse. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being my And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also reject your children. That's the power of the entire verse. We can't, sometimes we got to make sure we don't stop in the middle of the verse. We make a bad habit of being a part of a verse when the power of the verse is the entire verse. So make sure when we minister to somebody, don't just give them part of the verse. Bad habit we have in ministry, a lot of times we just say one part of the verse and they need to, they need to know the whole part. If someone is walking in fear and they, how can, how can you hold your peace? How, how come you're so calm? A pandemic's going on. How come, you, how come you're so calm? And then you say, well, you know, it, it's my God, I mean, Thou shall keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him because I trust him. That's how how do I hold my peace? Because the word is the word of God says, Thou shall keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. That, you want the answer to that question? The answer to that question, how do I hold my peace in the pandemic? How do I hold my peace in chaos? How do I, how do I hold my peace with all the crazy people around me? Thou should keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Don't think about the crazy people. Don't think about the crazy world. Your mind is stayed on him. You will hear me say it every day. The last month, you're going to hear me say it every day. You're going to continue to hear me say it every day because our mind is under, under attack every day. Day. Our mind is under attack every day. One more time. Mind is under attack every day. That's why you hear me read that one verse, Isaiah 26, 3. Highlight it, memorize it, say it every day. Highlight it, memorize it, say it every day. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace. Mind is stayed on him. Not the world. Mind is on him. Mind is stayed on him. We, we, we got to recognize this. We got to recognize this is no plaything now. Worldwide panic, worldwide fear, no longer playtime. It's time to get busy. Apply the word. Live by the word. We say it all the time. Apply the word. Live by the word. Be doers. Like the word says, be doers. Be doers of the word. Be doers, of, not hearers only. That's what we got to do. We got to live this stuff. Living by the word, like we sing in the song, amen. Now, let's also look now. Before I'm going to share this list with you, before I give you one more scripture, what got this started was I was just I was just housing, getting ready for a topic last night for the word, and I came across came across this Google list what people are fearing, what people fear the most, what people fear the most, and guess what? What people fear the most has nothing to do with the word. Get that. What people, I'm going to read it to you in a minute. I'm going to just list to you. What people are fearing in the world has nothing to do with the word because they only know the world. We just said it right here, Hosea 6. If you die for a lack of knowledge, you have no knowledge about the word. You have no knowledge that the biggest fear is where are you going when you die? Where are you going? If you don't know that, 
if you don't know where you're going, that should be a fear. But if you don't know there is a word of God to follow, you don't even you don't even have the biggest fear in your mind. Now let's let's look at before I go to the next that list. Turn to Matthew 10 28. Matthew 10 28. Because sometimes we know we know know because we have to know. 1028. 1028. Matthew 10 28. Do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul. But rather fear him who is to destroy both soul and body in hell. Say that again. Let's look at that verse. Do not fear those who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul but rather fear him capital h who is able to destroy both your soul and your body in hell what see you understand what this do you understand what that just said see we can that's what's going on right now we talk about that about What's, what, what's going on in the world? We talked about that, that. People are so worried about what's happening to your body. They're not thinking about the soul. They don't care about the soul. They're so busy focusing on what's going to happen to my body. They have no concern whatsoever. What about your soul? Yeah, you might be sick right now. You might be worried about the, the pan pandemic or you're worried about stress. you worry about fear. But what is your soul? See, that, that's what, that has nothing to do with your soul. What the fear is attacking right now is your body. And when you walk in fear, the fear manifests, dis-ease turns to disease in your body. It will capture the stress in your mind, in your spirit. It starts in spirit. If there's spiritual unrest, it goes to the mind. And then there's mental unrest. Mental unrest. And then mental unrest, dis-ease turns to disease in the body. If you don't capture, if you don't capture every thought, we, we keep talking about 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Capture every thought. Capture every thought that's not like God. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. See, we got to live by these things because this is the key to your peace of mind and not walk in fear. See, th these scriptures I keep saying over and over again, make sure you write them down, you highlight them because as soon as somebody comes to you, they see your joy. They see your peace. They see your anointing. Have no idea what it is. They see your anointing because God is all over you. God's peace is all over you. His anointing is all over you. They have no idea what the anointing is, but they see it all over you. The Lord, your giving heart, the light of the Lord, your peace, your joy. In the middle of chaos, in the middle of a pandemic, you have the nerve to have joy, the nerve to be at peace, the nerve to not worry like everybody else is running around like a chicken with a head. And you sitting there, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God's got this. Stay calm. I, God's got this. I live on Psalm 91 Street. Praise God. Hey, stay calm. God's got this. What do you mean, God's got this? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Hey, hey, take a chill pill. Hey, hey, take a chill pill. Let me tell you how to get the peace of God. Let me, how to keep peace in your life. Have no fear. Stand still. Exodus 14, 13. Exodus 14, 13. Have no fear. Stand still. Stand still, stand still. What stand still mean? What stand still? Okay, I'm standing still. No fool, don't don't call him a fool. Excuse me, excuse me. Don't call him. <laughs> Gotta watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. They they still. I'm standing still. What I do next? Oh, excuse me. That's not standing still. That's not standing still. That's standing frozen. Stand still is take a deep breath. Calm down. Stand still. Be still and know that I am God. I just put, I just posted that the other day. Be still and know that I'm God. If you know he is God, there is no fear. Be still and know, don't speculate, no theory, know that I am God. How do you know he is God? How do you know he is God? The word of God. How do you know he is God? Because you know the word of God. You know what's in the word of God. You study the word of God. You pray, you praise, you worship. You praise, you pray, you worship. You praise, you pray, you worship. You're keeping your mind stayed on him. Mind stayed on him. Mind stayed on him. 
We got to do this. We got to do this stuff. That's why you hear me say it for the last month. I say some of the things over and over. Holy Spirit says, you got to say it until they get it. Holy Spirit said, say it until they get it. Everybody's got to get this. If you can hear my voice, wherever you are, are in the world, day and night, we got to get this. If I say it every day, the Holy Spirit said, say it every day because they got to get this. If you want peace of mind, you got to get this. Living by the word is no longer a theory. Let me say it again. Living by the word is no longer a theory. Hey, Nedra, live it. Ooh. Praise God. Next verse, next verse. <laughs> now, oh, let me get to the list. Let me get to the list. I got I to gotta share this now. I got to share this list. I'm going I'm to say it quickly. You got to hear this list of fears. And dying, see, the fear of dying should be where am I going? Am I going to heaven or hell? Am I going? Let me, I got to say this first. The, the real fear is you should have what people should be fearing is when it is your time to leave this earth. You should be concerned about where are you going for eternity? Are you going to heaven or hell? Dying is the last thing on the list. I got 47 things listed and dying is the last thing on the list. Everything else is in the world. Let me share this with you. This is what got this started. Now I'm going to say it quickly. I'll put the entire list. Uh, I'll post it. Okay. These are the fears. Now, now this list was 2017, but then I look at 2020 and 2020 people worry about the economy people worry about their job people worry about their paycheck people worried about oh what's going to happen P people are worried about everything in the world no no don't type them no don't type them not typing no do not type these 47 because i'm going to be saying them quickly wait until the posting amen okay number one corrupt corrupt government officials number one fear <laughs> number one fear corrupt government officials two american health care a trump care number three pollution of oceans rivers and lakes four pollution of drinking water five five not enough money for the future six high medical bills seven the u.s will be involved in another world war eight global warming climate changes nine north korea north korea using weapons 10 air pollution 11 economic financial collapse 12 extinction of plants and animals 13 terrorist attack 14 identity theft 15 biological warfare 16 credit card fraud 17 people people i love dying 18 people i love becoming seriously ill 19 cyber terrorism 20 widespread unrest uh, civil unrest 21 nuclear attack 22, terrorism. 23, government restriction from firearms and ammunition. 24, government tracking of personal data. 25, corporate tracking of personal t data. 26, oil spills. 27, the collapse of electrical grid. 28, being hit by a drunk driver. 29, the Affordable Care, Obamacare. 30, pandemic or major p epidemic. 31, being unemployed. 32, nuclear accident or meltdown 33 losing my data on my phone losing my data on my phone or other important documents in a disaster 34 heights 35 random mass shooting 36 government use of drones in the united states 37 devastating drought 38 break-ins 39 becoming seriously ill 40 theft of property 41 sharks 42, computers replacing people in the workforce. 43, devastating tornadoes. Th 44, reptiles. 45, devastating earthquake. 46, devastating hurricane. 47, racial hate and crime. And 48, dying. Last one, dying. Now, what, now, what, there's one common denominator in all 48, can you now you heard everything I just said there's one common denominator in everything I just said on this list you have no control over any of it you have no control over anything I just said and then for 2020 the fear of the coronavirus and, and fear of not being able to see my loved one see all these things we have no control over we have no control 
and see what people are letting happen when you have no control that opens the door for fear let me say it again when you have no control you open the door for fear but if you keep your mind stayed on him you got control of that you got total control of what you keep your mind on are you looking at the world or looking at him i said every day the common denominator everything i just read you have no control over it the only thing you have control over is keeping your mind stayed on him and hold your peace have no fear hold your peace how do you hold your peace keep your mind stayed on him because we what trust see we got we got we got to keep stop worrying about things we have no control over you can focus so much on things you can't control it will pull you away from God let me say it again you can focus so much about things you can't control it will pull you away from God and when it pulls you away from God what is that when it pulls you away from God that fear is now an idol let me say it again if something is not that loud car here when whatever it is is strong enough to pull you away from God that thing is now your idol because you're giving it more time than God. If if it is, is strong enough to pull you away from God and you've been following God, you'll follow Christ. You are a follower of Christ and you have fear all in your heart. Now let me say it again. You are a follower of Christ and you're filled with fear. Something's wrong. You follow Christ. You know the word. You read the word. But your heart is filled with fear. What's going on? You're looking too much at the world. You're looking too much. It's in the news. It's in newspapers. We see it with a face. We see it with the eyes. It's right in front of us. It's all around us. There's no wonder. We're in the world, but we are what? Not of the world. It's all around us. Fear is all around us. That's why I've done so many lessons on it. It's all around us. The only thing we got control over is what are we looking at? The word or the world period the word or the world let's say it with me what am I looking at the word or the world put your hands up the word or the world talk to yourself what am I looking at the word or the world trust or fear say it again trust the word fear the world trust the word fear the world period there is no middle road the word of God the word of God is our peace. We hold on to his promises. It's a simple matter. Either we're walking in fear or we're walking in the word. We're walking in the peace of God or we walk in fear and chaos and madness. We said we said in the other lesson, God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. The world is confusion. The world is violence, perversion, chaos, violence, all the fear of the world. The pride of life we talked about the other day. The pride of life. The lust of the flesh. People want to go back to the beach. Want to go back to partying. Forget about dying. I want to go back and party. I got to get my partying. I got to go swimming. Yeah, there's a pandemic. Yeah, I want to go swimming. Yeah, you go swimming during a pandemic. I want to go back to gambling. I got to go back to Vegas so I can get back to... Forget about people dying. I got to gamble. The pride of life. We talked about it. Lust of the flesh. That's what people worry about. People worry about going swimming, going back to the beach, going back to gambling. What about if you die? What's going to happen to you? Uh, I never thought about that. You never thought about that. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. They don't know. Don't be mad at them. They don't know. That's the sad part. They don't know. Now, some of them, some of them we talked about, some are rebellious. Some are walking blindly. They know there's a word of God. They know there's a church on Sunday. Some of me, some even go on Sunday and send Monday through Saturday. And they go on Sunday and send Monday through Saturday and goes and they think Sunday is going to cover seven days of sin. Excuse me. If you walk in the word or you live in the world, let me see. Either you're walking in the word or you're living in the world. Let's do it again. Walking in the word or living in the world. 
are you walking in the word or living in the world they don't go together complete opposite are you walking in the word are you living in the world which one there is no there is no middle road the line is right here the line is right here either you're walking in the word or you're living in the world living in the world is nothing but fear chaos violence perversion negativity everything that will bring you down everything will bring you down if you live in the world but if you live in the word if you live in the word peace beyond understanding greater is he who is in me than he was in the world first john 4 4 first john 4 4 greater is he who is in me who is in me than he was in the world now we got to be careful that verse we got to be careful greater is he now the words talk about great is he who is in me that he was in the world but if the world is in you great is greater is he who is in me is the wrong he that's a small h that's a small h greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world but if greater is he is the world guess what we're in trouble because you just said greater is the world in me than god no greater is he a living god jesus than the devil who is in the world so you got to remember these visuals greater is he is almighty god the power of jesus power in the name of jesus power in the blood of jesus that's the greater is he we want we want the power in the name of jesus power in the blood of jesus that's the that's what we, that's the he we're talking about not the world the he we're talking about is power in the name of jesus power in the blood of jesus who we are in christ psalm 91 protection the whole armor of god the authority luke 10 19 to trample over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt me that's what we want that's the he we want not the world uh-uh go way 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 my window go way way from my window devil get thee behind me satan resist the devil and he will flee but the only time the devil's going to flee is what mind stay on him because he can't touch this no 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 don't, don't, don't. <laughs> he can't touch this he when your mind is stayed on god he can't touch you when your mind is stayed on him the devil can't touch you that's why i did the t-shirt resist the devil Pium, boom, he's gone oh no oh no he's praying she's praying they're praising they're worshiping get let me get out of here Beep, boom, gone because when you praise God, the devil doesn't want to be anywhere around. He got to go. That's right. And you got to go because I'm praising God. I'm a child of God and nothing shall by any means hurt me. Say it with me. I am a child of God. Say it with me. I am a child of God and nothing shall by any means hurt me. Say it again. I am. Point to yourself. I am a child of God and nothing shall by any means hurt me. Say it again, I am a child of God and nothing shall by any means hurt me. That's not a theory. That's not a theory. He said, behold, I give you the authority. The whole verse, behold, I give you the authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all, not some, over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing, if you walk in your authority, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Yes, yes, there's a pandemic, but see what we're talking about, remember Matthew, our body, our flesh can be hurt, but it's not touching our soul. Remember 1028, don't be fearful of what's attacking your body because he can't touch your soul. You see, those of us, those of us who deal with pain or illness, infirmity, you're still praising. You may be in bed right now, or you're sick, or you're, you're in paralysis, but you're still praising. Your soul is untouched. Yeah, your body may be racked in pain, but guess what? You're still praising. You may feel pain every day, but you're still praising. You're still worshiping the Lord. You still love the Lord. See, that's what we fear is not having a place to love, not having a place to hold on to God. When you have no nothing to praise or worship, what's there left? You have nothing to hold on to. Then the pain increases. If you're in pain and you want to say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to God. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, ah. ah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The pains, the pain is hitting your body. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Now, why am I saying that? 
I'm saying praise God anyhow. Yeah, my body's in pain right now, but praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my, oh, my back is Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Mm. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm feeling pain the whole time. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah, you're attacking my body, but you can't touch my soul. You can't touch my spirit. You're attacking my body, but you can't touch my soul. You can't touch my spirit. You touch my body. You can't touch my soul. You can't touch my spirit. Yeah, I don't care what you hit me with, devil. I don't care what you hit me with. You can't touch my body. Yeah, you can touch my body. You can't touch my soul, and you can't touch my spirit. Get deep behind me, Satan. Excuse me. Got to get an attitude. When you talk to the devil, you got to get attitude. Get thee behind me, Satan. Uh, don't be nice. Uh, excuse me, Satan. Uh, could you get thee behind me, please? Does that sound like I'm talking and walking in authority? Uh, 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 Mr. Devil, uh, could you stop stop attacking me? Uh, get, get thee behind me, Satan. Do you believe what you're saying? Do you believe the words come out your mouth? Get thee behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I'm using my authority. Get thee behind me, depression. Get thee behind me, fear. Get thee behind me. Get thee. Get, whoo, get thee behind me, stress. Get thee behind me, infirmity. Get thee behind me, attack. Get thee behind me. In the name of Jesus, go away, away my window. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> get mad. Don't get sad. Get mad. I say it all the time. Don't get sad. Get mad. Hey, Michelle Gomez, get mad. Start praising more. Worship more. Stillness more. See. That's what that's how you get that's how you get the devil back as I get ready to close. The way you get the devil back, don't get sad, don't walk in fear, get mad and praise more, pray more, stillness more, sit still and rest. In the middle of a storm, you have the nerve to stand still. In the middle of an attack, you have the nerve to stand still. In the middle of the pain in your body. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I love you so much, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I love you so much. Because I know God's with me. In the middle of the pain, he's still with me. In the middle of darkness, he's still with me. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're going through. He's right there with you. As soon as you say, thank you, Jesus, bam, there you are. You're in his presence. As soon as you help me, Jesus, he's in your presence. You're in his presence. He's a breath away. Let me say it again. He is a breath away. His peace is waiting for you to say, thank you, Jesus. Bam, presence. As soon as you say, thank you, Jesus. Bam, the peace of God comes over you immediately. Because what's happening? Instead of fear, connect. Matter of fact, we don't disconnect. Try not to disconnect. The world is always trying to pull you away. Let me say it again. The world's main focus is to pull you away. Let me say it again. The world's main focus is to pull you away. That's what that's that's what First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. Good time or bad. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God for you. So if you have the nerve to give thanks in hard times, you slap the devil. Let me say it again. If you have the nerve to praise God in the middle of hard times, you are slapping the devil. He wants to steal your joy, your faith, your peace, and you're still praising God in the middle of hardship, in the middle of debt, in the middle of worry, in the middle of fear, in the middle of attack, you have the nerve. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Because you're saying, thank you for never leaving me. Thank you for always being with me. I know I'm going through hard times, but you're still right here. I know I feel pain in my body, but I know you're still here. I know you said, I would never leave you nor forsake you i'll be with you even to the end of the age i believe your word lord i believe your promises i'm holding on a lot to your unchanging hand the same yesterday today forevermore i'll keep my mind stay on you i trust you i have no fear stand still i trust you with all my heart i lean not my own understanding in all my ways i acknowledge you lord and you will direct my path praise god praise god thank you jesus we gotta just go into praise mode when you feel attacked, don't get sad, get mad, praise more, pray more, worship more. That's how you get him back. The nerve. Huh. Uh-uh. No, you didn't. <laughs> like the girls in my class. Uh-uh. No, you didn't try to steal my joy. Uh-uh. No, you didn't try to steal my peace. Uh-uh. No, you didn't try to steal my faith, my joy. Oh, get deep behind me, say, uh-uh. <laughs> but we got to get that. We got to get that attitude. 
Remember, remember our teenagers? Our teenagers are good with a side neck. Uh-uh. No, you didn't. No, you didn't, devil. No, you didn't. You better get thee behind me, Satan. No, you didn't. Uh-uh. Shoot. Let me tell you something right now. Let me start talking the word of God. Let me start preaching you, devil. Go away. Way from my window. I am a child of God, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. Let me say it again, devil. You must be deaf, dumb, and blind. I am a child of God, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. In the name of Jesus. Beep, beep. <laughs> Woo, got to go. Help me, somebody. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Just thank him right now. Just thank him. Just raise your hands right now. Just raise your hands right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for just taking over right now, Lord. As we close right now, Lord, as we close right now, Lord, use each one of us, Lord, in this fellowship to let people know what the real fear is all about. It's not the world. We need to fear what's happening for eternity, not what's happening in the short time we're in this body, Lord. Help us let people understand. Use our light. Use our anointing. Use our praise. Use our peace, however it is, to let other people know what the real fear is. Do you have Jesus? Do you know where you're going? Whenever your time comes, that's the real fear, not the world. The world is nothing. What is your eternity going to be like? Let me say it again. What is your eternity going to be like? Lord, help us, Lord. Touch every fellowship member right now. Bless and anoint every fellowship member, live or archived, on the screen or off the screen, who can hear my voice right now to be vessels, to be used by you, to let your light jump on whoever we talk to, whoever we speak to, whoever we pray over, whoever we just pass by, and your anointing jumps off us right onto them knocks them out with a spirit right now lord use each one of us mightily lord in jesus name we pray thank you jesus thank you jesus Whew. the joy of the lord is our strength the joy of the lord is our strength you got to always feed your joy and your peace it all starts with your peace if there is no peace, there is no joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You lose your joy, there goes your strength to hold on by faith. And you lose your faith, there goes your hope to know it's going to ever be all right. It starts with your peace. It starts with your peace. you got to protect, number one, peace. Your joy, your faith, your hope. Your peace, your joy, your faith, your hope. Your peace, your joy, your faith, your hope. you got to protect it any one of them is that's your foundation that's your foundation the devil is after anyone or all let me say it again the devil is after anyone or all because if he can get any one of them your foundation grows strong go excuse me your foundation goes weaker takes two weaker three weaker takes them all you fall completely but let's protect them all but it all starts with your peace because your peace and your joy keeps your faith strong. That's what feeds your faith. Feed your faith. I always say it every day, every salvation prayer. Feed your faith, starve your doubt. Feed your spirit, starve your flesh every day. Every day, not just some days, every day. And that's what living by the word is all about. What people should fear in this world is getting saved don't wait too late don't wait too late to find jesus get saved now in case you fell dead right after this fellowship get i say the i say the salvation prayer every day if you don't know jesus and you're watching right now you say the prayer of salvation right now because you might drop dead right after i say see you tomorrow and then you know where you're going it doesn't matter Get it out the way. Get it out the way. Make it right right now. Get it out the way right now. Feed your spirit. Starve your flesh. Feed your faith. Starve your doubt. Live it. Breathe it. Speak it. We got to do this. We got to live it. Amen. Amen. Father God, Father God, Lord, we thank you right now, Lord. We thank you for this lesson today, Lord. As we come together in fellowship, Lord. To keep walking that walk in you, Lord. Just touch everyone right now, Lord, in this place, live or archive, wherever they are in the world, Lord, who can hear my voice. Lord, we ask right now for supernatural strength in each fellowship member to be able to stay strong in you, Lord. Strong in the word. 
strong in our peace, strong in our joy, strong in our faith, strong in our hope. To know you got this, Lord. To stay calm. To know you got this. Be still and know that you are God. You are the way maker, the miracle worker, the mountain mover, the things we said earlier. You are everything we need you to be. Be still and know that you are God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Right now, before we close, as always, uh, please, hey, Glenda, amen. Uh, before we close, uh, please, no typing as I do the closing prayers. Right now, I'm talking to someone right now. I'm talking to someone right now who's been listening to this entire lesson. But you don't know Jesus. This is the first time you've even heard the word. You've never heard anything we talked about. But now you know what we should be worrying about. So all you've been doing the entire two hours is depression and fear, suicidal thoughts, darkness in your life. You've been crying the entire two hours and you have no idea how you got on this channel. And that's because God brought you here. You're not here by accident. God brought you to this channel to ease the pain and suffering emotionally or physically in your life right now. You may be here as a backslider, walking in guilt. And now you wanna come back to the Lord. For whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back to living a life of sin. And now your life is falling apart and the devil's telling you, once you leave God, you could never go back. And that is a lie for the pit of hell. No one is perfect. All have fallen short. So if you've been walking in sin as a backslider and you want to come back to the Lord, just say the prayer of salvation over again. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you unless you listen to him. He has no kind of hold on me or you. Or you're walking in depression. I want you to pray with me. I want both of you to pray with me. Repeat after me. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe He died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting up to you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that is not like you, in Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is now right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us to teach us, to guide us, and to also convict us when you're not walking in God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing darkness into your life. Every day, spend time with God. Not just every Sunday, every day, spend time with God. Like I just said, feed your spirit, starve your flesh, feed your faith, starve your doubt, every day. And the more time you spend with God every day, the more peace you'll feel in your life, which is God letting you know it's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you. Amen. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spirits of retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash, and every other demonic spirit named unnamed, seen unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. And we cast all you demonic spirits out of our mind, out of our spirit, out of our family, out of our home, all back to the pit of hell from which you came in Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship, loose unspeakable joy, loose peace 
beyond understanding. Loose restoration, Lord. Restore, restore every area of our life, everyone in our life, everything in our life. Loose reconciliation. Lord, bring reconciliation, Lord, to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil attack, Lord. Bring joy back, communication back, trust back, love back to marriages and families right now who are struggling to survive because of the devil's attack. And Lord, keep a hedge of protection, Lord, over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, emotional healing, physical healing, spiritual healing by your stripes we were healed. We were healed. And we speak it every day. I believe I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. I believe I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. When you pray, believe you have received it. Confess it every day. I believe I've received my healing in the name of Jesus. Push, pray until something happens. Loose, supernatural overflow, financial breakthrough supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, you let your blessings of abundance rain down, Lord. Rain down <clears throat> on the fellowships, every financial need, large or small, especially during these times right now where the pandemic is affecting so many job opportunities and jobs. For you shall supply all our need according to your riches, not our riches, your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want I shall not want for anything when the Lord is my shepherd. For we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We're the lender and not the borrower. We're blessed going in, blessed going out. We're blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We are out of debt. All of our needs are met. We have plenty more to put in store. We are children of God. And nothing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way. And finally, Lord, we thank you for our miracle. Each fellowship member has a miracle they're praying for right now. And we now know every day, spend time every day, see it. See your miracle every day. See it, believe it, receive it in your heart. And once you receive it in your heart, expect it every day. Expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We will never know the when. But because we don't know when, that means any day you wake up, could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle you're praying for right now. So Father God, all these things we ask, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the fellowship say amen, amen, amen.